Welcome, everyone, to the Tethered Shipyards. I am Takeshi Yamato, the Yard Master, joining our host, the House Go Gamer. Yo. Today, we are finally getting around to something I've been wanting to do for a while discussing small craft and statting the shuttles and fighters from Starfleet Command 2. Depressingly, some of them aren't going to be available in the map editor. Those being the Wasp class attack fighters and the class F refits. But, we're starting with the Hornet. And of course, to make up for the fact that we can't really zoom in and get good details on them. We have a whole lot of them! As part of a massive Starfleet battle group. Which we'll talk about later. The Hydrans did not want to give up their sec the secrets of their fighter craft so easily. In fact, until the Klingons started attacking the Hydrans with the independently developed Steel Fist fighter, which, while crude, I mean, it's Klingon, of course it's crude. Yeah. They were damn effective. So the Hydrants had no choice but to give the Federation, classic enemies of the Empire, access to fighter technology. Enter an aircraft named for Take's favorite fighter, the, the F Hornet. The Hornet. Personally, I prefer to think of these as the Wraith. However... That appears to be the Terran designation for them. Ah. Oh. Regardless, these craft are rather heavily armed with two phaser va with two ship bay grade phaser banks and a micro torpedo launcher. A kind of phaser cannon. A pulse cannon, similar to the type used on Constitution and Soyuz-class starships, were then introduced in a new Flight 2 variant. Of course, when the Hydrans really needed to distract the Klingons, the Federation got access to the Gatling Phaser, replacing the standard Phaser banks with, well, Gatlings. Yep. Nasty little things. Yeah. They served throughout the general war and the ISC war of pacification with distinction. But as it always happens in Trek, they became obsolete within 30 years of their introduction. Yep. Improved targeting sensors better weapons, improved shielding, it basically made them obsolete. Of course, yeah. that was not the end of these things. Due to the enduring popularity of war films set during the general war. I mean, can you blame them? Yeah. I mean, we do World War II movies all the frickin' time. Yep. Yeah. They remained popular, and any survivors were actually put to good use as actual filming assets. Yep. Of course, Starfleet also kept a few of them around, and used them for comparison training against... You guessed it, their ultimate replacement, the Peregrine. Yep. They were later reintroduced in 2410, refit into the so-called Kodai standard. Notable members of the fleet <laughs> protested at the name, and simply refer Raven C, in reference to the fact that the original Raven A was the introduction type. Oh, Raven, Hornet. <laughs> I accidentally yeah. used the yeah. SFC designation. Yeah, Hornet 
Hornet A, so, Hornet B, Hornet C. They prefer the original designation over an anime reference. And to be honest, I don't blame them. Yeah. So, let's get to statting this. This is the uh, let Hornet Hornet B. We'll put that designation in there. Hornet B class fighter. Uh, so, these things enter have an entered service date of 2287. And as per standard shuttle rules, this gives them a total of about 27 points to work with and three department points. We've spread out their, or, I have spread out their system points as follows. Comms 5, Computers 5, Engines 9, Sensors 6, Structure 6, Weapons 8. They're middle of the road in sensor, cap sensing capa sensor capabilities and uh, durability for a small craft, but they hit like a truck, and they're pretty much one of the most agile things of the 23rd cent one of the most agile small craft of the 23rd century. This is also shown in their department values. Two points in con and one point in security. For its main talent, it has improved reaction control system, and it has phaser banks, a phaser cannon, and micro torpedoes for weaponry. I have statted these out, but I won't recite them. You can look them over in the dock. For other derived stats, it's a scale one starship, being a shuttlecraft, as opposed to a pod or a runabout. And it has resistance one, shields five, and power five. And for the descriptor trait, Federation shuttle. So that's the Hornet Hornet B. We might potentially. Do we want to do a Hornet C for the twenty fifth century? The Hornet C is just easy, easy to modify. Just upgrade to phaser to purebred phaser cannons. Yeah, just yeah. Get rid of the phaser banks. Go full phaser cannon. Add another uh, twelve points, I think. And uh, they are essentially the same thing. In fact, yeah. the Kodai, which really I hate the name, I do. Yeah, is the third. S is the third craft to be introduced into STO from something that wasn't STO. Or the shows. It came from Starfleet Command 2. And I enjoy the fact that Cryptic actually did that. Alright. I'll go ahead and make a Hornet C for my own files. And uh, put Kodai in as like, a uh, nickname. So yeah, not only is that the Hornet, that's this whole Federation battle group here. Yeah. Which I will designate as the one o as the one o ninth Expeditionary Force Andromedan, because this is one of the fleets that went through and started kicking some Neotholian rear. <laughs> Comprised, obviously, of two Constitution refits, two Soyuz-class gun cruisers, four Miranda-class light cruisers, eight Okinawa-class frigates, four Akula-class destroyers, two Richmond-class new heavy cruisers, 
two Missouri-class battleships, a Yamato-class super battleship, and an Ark Royal-class carrier with all of her fighters, as well as four Oberth-class, I guess you could call them fighter-leader scouts. For obvious reasons. Nasty little fleet. I almost yeah. pity, I almost pity the Tholians. Almost. Bye bye.